Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Physiology Learning. Today we are going to understand one of the most important clinical topic that is the difference between upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion. Let us get into the topic. We are discussing our CNS lectures wherein we are discussing our motor system and today our discussion will be on the upper and lower motor neuron lesions. So what is the objective for today's topic? First we have to understand what is upper motor neuron and what is lower motor neuron. Next, we will be seeing the difference in features of upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion. So coming to what is upper motor neuron and what is lower motor neuron. So any neuron which is coming down from the central nervous system that is from the brain and the spinal cord and it is synapsing with the anterior horn cells of the spinal motor neurons. They are called as upper motor neurons. So for example, all the neuron fibers which are coming from the central nervous system that is the higher regions of brain and the spinal cord they will go down and they will end their synapse in the spinal cord especially in the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord. From the spinal cord there will be starting of one neuron which is ultimately innervating the skeletal muscle. What is that neuron called as? It is called as lower motor neuron. So the lower motor they start from the anterior horn cells and they directly go and innervate the skeletal muscles. So this will become our lower motor neuron. So let us take this is our muscle. This muscle is directly innervated by the lower motor neuron. So the one that is red here, it is nothing but a upper motor neurons. The one that is in pink here is our lower motor neurons. So let us try to understand one simple concept. Upper motor neuron is like a teacher in the class. So what will happen when teacher is there in the class? Most of the class will be in silent mode like they will be kept under control. But whenever upper motor neuron is not there or the teacher in our example is not there, what will happen? All the lower motor neurons, they will be performing all their actions on their own. So the upper motor neuron has both inhibitory as well as excitatory impulses on the lower motor. But predominantly they are inhibitory to the lower motor neurons. Predominantly, they are keeping in control of the action of the lower motor neurons. So just remember this simple example, upper motor is neuron is like a teacher in the class who is controlling the lower motor neuron. So now let us try to understand what will happen whenever there is a lesion in the upper motor neuron and whenever there is a lesion in the lower motor neuron. So in an upper motor neuron lesion, the cut can be at any level. It will, there can be any level cut can be there. And in the lower motor neuron, whenever th it starts from the synapse here until it reaches the muscle, if the injury is anywhere in between this region, it is called as lower motor neuron lesion. So now we will be discussing about the difference in upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion. So coming to the features, we will be discussing them under these subendings that is the muscle group, tone, paralysis, atrophy, fibrillation and fasciculations then reflexes, then finally the Babinski sign. This Babinski sign is also a part of reflexes only. So let us try to understand what happens to the features of all these subheadings. So first coming to the muscle group, it is pretty simple. So whenever any upper motor neuron lesion is there, it is going to innervate multiple levels of lower motor neuron. So tell me now which either group of muscles will be affected or single muscle group will be affected. Now here it is innervating multiple groups of lower motor neurons. So obviously in upper motor neuron what happens is there is multiple group of muscles which are affected. Whereas in lower motor neuron lesion here the single group will be affected or else a single muscle can also be affected. Here we can write single can be affected. Coming to the tone the upper motor neuron it was keeping in control of the lower motor neuron. Now upper motor neuron there is no upper motor which is controlling it. So what will what the lower motor will do? The lower motor will keep on contracting and increasing the tone of the muscle. So the tone of the muscle becomes hypertonia, hypertonia in case of upper motor neuron lesion. What happens in lower motor neuron lesion? Suppose if it is cut over this region, the muscle is not innervated now. So whenever the muscle is not getting any nerve supply, what will happen to the tone of the muscle? Ultimately the tone of the muscle is going to drop. What is it called? It is called as hypotonia. It is called as hypotonia. Now whether the upper motor neuron lesion is there or a lower motor neuron lesion is there, the muscle is ultimately going in for a paralysis. So in both the lesions, the muscle will go for paralysis, but they will go in for a different kind of paralysis. Let's think of the upper motor neuron. 
what will happen upper motor neuron is controlling the lower motor neuron lower motor neuron is going to contract the muscle so in case of an upper motor neuron this lower motor will be contracting and causing a stiff kind of paralysis what is this stiff kind of paralysis called as this stiff kind of paralysis is called as spastic paralysis it is called as spastic paralysis whereas in case of lower motor neuron it will cause something called as flaccid paralysis flaccid means loose why it is loose because the muscle is not being innervated now so the muscle will become very loose in nature so that is called as flaccid paralysis now coming to atrophy what is atrophy atrophy is the shrinkage of the muscle in case of an upper motor neuron then lower motor is still innervating the muscle so the chances of atrophy is very very minimal so atrophy is not usually seen in case of upper motor neuron lesion whereas in case of lower motor neuron lesion atrophy is almost always seen so atrophy is always seen whereas in case of upper motor if the person is not using the muscle for a prolonged period what it can cause is it can cause something called as disuse atrophy the person is not using the muscle because of which it is getting atrophy coming to the next feature that is fibrillation and fasciculations fibrillations and fasciculations usually happens in case of a lower motor neuron lesion fibrillation and fasciculations are present in a lower motor neuron lesion whereas it is absent in case of a upper motor neuron lesion so what is this fibrillation and fasciculation it is happening in lower motor neuron lesion so whenever any lower motor neuron is damaged for example let's take a cut here whenever any lower motor neuron is damaged what it is going to do is the nerve supply to the muscle is cut off and suddenly there might be some depolarization in the muscle itself the muscle can produce some spontaneous depolarization this spontaneous depolarization can produce very very minute impulses electrical impulses this minute electrical impulses are called as fibrillation usually the fibrillation part is recorded by an emg machine except for the tongue tongue fibrillation can be seen rest anywhere else in the body like rest of the muscles they will have fibrillation only in the emgs and later on what will happen this damaged neuron they will start to regenerate and they can innervate the muscles again and at the same time what will happen is this muscle will start to produce more and more receptors on it suddenly whenever any impulse is passing through this newly generated neuron now many number of receptors also are available so what will happen is it will suddenly cause a little depolarization this time the depolarization will be a little higher to that of the fibrillation so this kind of depolarization is called as fasciculation so what is the difference between fibrillation and fasciculation fibrillation is the spontaneous depolarization of the muscle whereas fasciculation is the depolarization of the muscle due to reinnervation this reinnervation is the one which is causing fasciculation reinnervation of the muscle and one more thing this increase in number of receptors are also causing the increased sensitivity to increase the fasciculation this type is called as denervation hypersensitivity because of denervation there is an hypersensitivity which is happening so that is the major difference between fibrillation and fasciculation and fasciculation can be seen with the naked eye in all groups of muscles whereas fibrillation it is usually recorded by emg except in the tongue where the fibrillation can also be seen coming to the reflexes now what happens in case of upper motor neuron if the upper motor neuron is cut now the lower motor will be actively doing all the reflexes that is their reflexes will be exaggerated especially the deep tendon reflexes deep tendon reflexes they start here they go to the spinal cord and form a reflex arc and contract the muscle now upper motor is keeping them in control in a normal situation now there is nobody to control whenever there is an upper motor neuron lesion so ultimately whenever we strike the tendon it is going to be a hyper reflexive in case of an upper motor neuron lesion so the deep reflexes in case of a upper motor neuron is exaggerated whereas the deep reflexes in case of a lower motor neuron obviously it will not be present it will be a reflexia it will be it is usually a reflexia or hypo reflexia whereas the superficial reflex is absent in both the cases because it is a polysynaptic reflex so the superficial reflex it is absent in both the upper motor neuron as well as the lower motor neuron lesions now coming to the final point that is babinski sign 
Babinski sign forms an important aspect for differentiating the upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion. So let's try to understand what is Babinski sign. Babinski sign is a form of superficial reflex. It is also called as plantar reflex. So how is this reflex elicited? This reflex is elicited by stroking the lateral aspect of the foot till the ball of the great toe. And what is the normal response seen in normal individuals? The normal response seen is there is flexion of all toes. This is also called as plantar flexion response. So this is the normal response. So this is the normal response. What happens in case of an upper motor neuron? In case of an upper motor neuron, when the same is done, there is extension of this great toe and there is fanning of the other toes. This great toe goes in for extension. This sign is called as Babinski sign positive. This response is called as Babinski sign positive. And this Babinski sign positive is usually seen in the case of upper motor neuron lesions. So in case of an upper motor neuron lesion, the, the Babinski sign is positive. It is also called as extensor plantar reflex because there is extension of the great toe. So it is called as extensor plantar reflex. Whereas in case of lower motor neuron lesion, it is normal that is plantar flexion happens. Now let's summarize what happens in an upper motor neuron lesion. All the tone and everything goes for exaggeration and the Babinski sign is positive and it is causing a spastic paralysis. Whereas in case of lower motor neuron lesion, it goes for hypotonia, hyporeflexia, that, that is or else areflexia and the Babinski sign is absent. So these are the differentiating between features between the upper motor neuron and a lower motor neuron lesion. Thank you for listening. We'll see you in the next video. If you like the content, subscribe to the channel and share it to your friends. Thank you so much.